uh, Castellation and OOP. Are you down with OOP? Yeah, you know me. We're all programming down here on, on the computer. <laughs> now that we've had our laugh, let's dive into one of the core principles of object oriented programming OOP. Um, encapsulation. So, encapsulation is all about bundling the data attributes in the methods or their functions that operate on the data in, into a single unit or a class. It also restricts direct access to some of the um, object's components, uh, which is a good way of uh, preventing accidental interference or misuse. So what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is a fundamental OOP concept that helps to protect an object's state um, because it prevents direct modification of fields, uh, thus ensuring that the object's state remains valid. Um, it uh, hides the internal workings, provides a clear separation between an object's interface and its implementation. Uh, and it promotes uh, modularity and maintainability, allowing changes in an internal implementation without affecting other parts of the code. So how does encapsulation work? Well, there's levels to this. So uh, it allows you to have private uh, fields or attributes. So fields or variables, attributes of a class, um, you declare them as private. Um, public methods. So you could provide public getter and setters to access and update those values of those private fields. So let's take a look at an example of encapsulation. So let's consider uh, let's consider this class here called person okay? um, to, to demonstrate encapsulation. So in person, uh, you see private fields uh, so if we have our string name and our int age, both of these have been set to be private. Okay. Um, this means that they cannot be directly assessed, okay, which means they won't be misused or mishandled or uh, proper errors occur. So we need ways to be able to uh, use it though. Well, first and foremost, we do have our constructor as we saw when we created classes. We created a constructor um, that allows you to initialize these fields in a new object of this type. Or this class type. Um, so, using that keyword, this again. But we also want to have uh, ways to be able, someone to be able to get the names that they need to get the name, or to be able to set the name if they need to set the name. Um, so, these are known as accessors and mutators, or getters and setters. Um, and I know we've seen them before, but just to reiterate so, public getter for the name, we're going to just say get name. And that's usually what you want to do. You just put the word get in front of the thing you're getting. Um, put the word set in front of the thing that you're setting. So you're a mutator here, so you can make a change to it. Same thing for our ages. Okay. And there's a special thing because you can also sometimes people just set it. And that's it. But what if someone gives you an age and it's not something you should be using? Like, well, your age is negative two. I'm not negative two. No one's negative two years old. That doesn't make sense. So we set the age instead. Three. Three. Three to zero. So, um, and then we're gonna add a little thing here too to allow us to be able to display it so we can see, hey, what the heck does this stuff look like? Um, so, I'm gonna print out name, put the name, and uh, age, age, right? So, um, so the above example, we see that the name and age fields are private. I mean, they, they cannot be accessed directly from outside the class. Um, the get name, set name, get age, and set age methods are public, providing controlled access to the private fields. So why don't we use encapsulation? Well, it allows us to have better control. Um, by providing getters and setters, we control how the fields are accessed and modified. Um, validation. We can add validation inside of the setters. Uh, for example, as we see, we're ensuring the age is positive in uh, a set age. Um, and flexibility. We can change the internal implementation later without changing the interface. So uh, here's how we can create and use the person objects. Okay, so let's create and use the encapsulated object that we created. Okay? So uh, as you see up here in our main method for my class, uh, we have a new person object we're creating. So we're just going to call uh, save it to the variable person, lowercase. Um, so new, the new keyword again to create this object and use this constructor. So we need a name, the age. 
So we're going to access and modify the fields using the methods that we have. So we're going to get the name that's been created, so A of house, and then the A get the H, the 25. And then we're going to modify the fields uh, using the settings method. You know what, Alice is uh, actually not Alice. We got them mixed up as Bob. Um, and so we're going to set Bob's age to 32. Yeah. Um, and then we're just going to display it so we can see that that change has occurred. And then we'll, we'll show the in, um, the validity of how the set age method works. So we're going to try to get it negative to see if that allows us to do so, which it won't. And then we're going to display it so we can see that it remains unchanged in this case. Okay. All right, so all right. Well, let's uh, you know, he executes. Yay! We created the person object of the per uh, based off the person class, which is an encapsulated object. Um, and we created the constructor, and the name was Alice, and the age was 25. Um, and we were able to get those using our getters. So, get name, get age. Get name, get age. And then we also made modifications. We changed the name to Bob, Bob and uh, the age to 30. And um, we displayed it using that display method. And then we try to make a change to it and then display it again. We see no changes occurred because that change was not validated inside the setter. So by encapsulating the person's class, we ensure that its fields cannot be directly uh, accessed or modified from outside, uh, providing a safer and more modular code structure. So in summary, encapsulation is a powerful OOPD principle that protects the object integrity by controlling access to data. By using private fields and public methods, encapsulation provides a clear and manageable way to interact with objects, enhancing code readability, maintainability and robustness. So next time you're programming, remember, are you down with OOP? Yeah, you know me, encapsulating data like a pro. That's how we roll. Bye -bye.